Hello and welcome to Stories from India, a podcast where we talk about myths, legends and folk tales from India. I'm your host Narad Muni and I'm a mythological character myself. I have the gift of eternal life and knowledge of the past, the present and the future. By profession, I'm a traveling musician and a storyteller. So the way I'm doing my job is by podcast. This week we'll continue the story of Devyani and Friday. We'll see why you should be careful when going swimming. If you accidentally put on someone else's clothes after your swim, you might just end up becoming their servant. The character this week is the sister of someone we previously encountered in the character of the week segment of episode 4 Harry Tales she's a demon she's a buffalo and she's both a quick recap of last week's episode we met shukracharya or friday who was the professor of the asuras a rival group of the devs friday had a student Kacha who was secretly a spy from the Dave's professor Friday also had the power to revive the dead He used it to revive Kacha a few times when other jealous asurs had killed him He did this at his daughter Devyani's insistence because she loved the boy On the last revival however Friday was forced to teach Kacha the secret behind his amazing power. Kacha after revival refused to marry Devyani on a technicality. And for that he was cursed to never be able to use the secret when he needed it most. We'll continue the story today from Devyani's point of view. Devyani had moved on. She was out on a picnic. Just an all-girls affair. Most notably, the party included Sharmista, the daughter of a local king. Friday was an advisor to the king. So the girls knew each other socially. It was a hot summer day. So they decided to go for a swim in a river near the picnic spot. They didn't really have any lockers back then. They simply put their clothes by the river bank and had a refreshing swim. Sharmista got out of the water first. She put on what she thought were her clothes. The problem? They were Devyani's. Devyani spotted that right away and flew into a rage. How dare Sharmista, a mere princess, touch her clothes? Clearly, there was a big class divide between the two. Sharmista agreed. There was a class divide, sure, but the other way around. Friday was merely an advisor to her father, and effectively his servant she said devyani should really see this as a happy accident if devyani wanted sharmista to maybe you know autograph the clothes she might be persuaded into doing her that favor obviously this attitude did little to help the argument between the ladies turned into a big fight it did not end well but it did end in a well because that's what sharmista and her friends lobbed devyani into they made a tiktok video of the whole thing the rest of the party rode off while devyani looked up at the tiny shaft of light she was going to have her revenge but first she had to get out of the well 
As is typical, when you need cell phone service the most, there wasn't any at the bottom of the well. Luckily for her, the TikTok video got lots of attention. And Yayati, a king who was nearby, decided to check if this was for real. And when he glanced down the well, he was shocked. It was indeed real. Quickly, he pulled out the girl and took her back to her home. Friday was angry. And the king, Sharmista's dad, not Yayati, cowered before his rage. Friday's rage, not Yayati's. Sharmista had committed a major crime. It wasn't just the physical and mental harm to Devyani. It was her idea that Friday was somehow beneath her. That was unacceptable. Friday had a proposal and the king had no choice but to agree. Sharmista would serve as Devyani's maid. She would get to sleep in a damp corner of Devyani's hut and would have to cook, clean, sew, and do the laundry. And she wouldn't even have the weekend off. Sharmista had to go along with this. Her father had ordered her to, which meant this was the law. And a princess, as a member of the royal family, should never ever go against the law. Somehow, that principle didn't seem to apply to another royal, as we will soon see. Yayati, the king who had pulled Devyani out of the well, had now stopped by on some silly pretext or the other. Soon, he started going on walks with Devyani. Gradually, the pair realized that they really, really liked each other. Yayati and Devyani were married soon after. They lived in Yayati's palace. And Sharmista, as Devyani's maid, was with her, of course. Her employment contract wouldn't allow her to slide out of this. But at least, Friday had warned Yayati that Sharmista was really a princess and also the daughter of his employer even though she was temporarily functioning as a maid. She must not be ill-treated. Now that wedding bells had finally rung for Devyani, it seemed like she would have a chance to be happy, especially after her heartbreaking experience with Kacha from the previous episode. Time passed, and the happy couple welcomed two little boys, Unfortunately, her marriage hit the rocks. Devyani discovered that her husband, Yayati, had been unfaithful to her. And that too, with Sharmista, her maid. And what's more, he even had three sons with Sharmista. Now, normally, a wife who is cheated on gets to keep the house and the car and full custody of the kids, along with substantial monthly payments. But this is ancient India we are talking about. So Devyani's version of a divorce meant that she returned to her father's house. Friday welcomed her and was about to ask her how his grandchildren were. But then he saw the expression on her face. Friday couldn't bear to see his daughter heartbroken again. When Yayati arrived soon after, trying to convince his wife to return, he had a long, uncomfortable chat with Friday instead. Friday cursed Yayati. Yayati would age horribly. The king was shocked as he realized he was suddenly as old as his own grandfather. He had had so many things in mind, 
such a large bucket list. Bungee jumping, canoeing, mountain climbing, skydiving, all of them were now completely impossible at his new age. He had to get his youth back somehow. He pleaded with Friday, until Friday finally put in a bit of a loophole. Yayati was allowed to swap his age with one of his children. Friday did that, despite the implication that there was a 40% chance one of Friday's grandsons would lose his youth. Yayati and Devyani reconciled. Maybe she pitied him in his old age. They returned to the palace. Yayati had five sons altogether with Devyani and Sharmishta. None of them agreed to swap their age with his. Except for the youngest son, Puru. That's all it took. The moment Puru agreed, there was a flash of light and he was suddenly old and Yayati was young. Puru was technically now the oldest. So he was made the king, despite his inexperience. Yayati did start crossing off items on his bucket list, but it didn't take him long to change his mind. Now that he could think clearly, he didn't really want all those things. He went back to the palace and swapped ages again with Puru. But Puru was allowed to remain king. The geriatric Yayati, together with Devyani, then retired into the mountains. Not to climb them. Yayati had started off desperate to cling on to his youth, but he learned soon enough that it wasn't worth it. What he decided he needed the most was the quiet life in the company of the woman he loved. That's all for now. Some notes on the show. Puru, the son of Sharmishta and Yayati, is the ancestor of most of the characters in the Mahabharat, which is the greatest Indian epic. Consider this as some groundwork ahead of actually starting on the Mahabharat. Yadu, who was Devyani and Yayati's son, was the ancestor Meanwhile, of Krishna, an avatar of Vishnu, whom we have seen previously in episode 11, The Boy Who Lived, and also episode 13, Nurse Ratchet and Umbrella Mountain, as well as with a few characters of the week. I've been calling Shukracharya Friday for a reason. The planet Venus is thought to represent Shukracharya, and in India, Shukravar, or Venus Day, is Friday. The character this week is the sister of someone we previously encountered in the Character of the Week segment of Episode 4, Hairy Tales. Mahishi was a buffalo demoness, just like her brother Mahishasur, who was a buffalo demon. When Mahishasur was killed by the goddess Durga, Mahishi decided to avenge her brother's death. She did what her brother had done. She prayed to Brahma, the creator, who also happens to be my dad. And just like that, Brahma appeared before her. If you've been listening to this podcast, you'll know how eager my dad is to fulfill wishes. Mahishi asked for the usual. You know, super strength and shape-shifting combo deal. While Brahma couldn't also give her complete immortality, he let her have her wish. She could only be killed by a child whose biological parents were Shiva and Vishnu. Now, that seems impossible. But as it happens... Vishnu in his female avatar as Mohini and Shiva 
did have a child. That child was Ayappa, a god who is much worshipped in southern India. Though Mahishi regularly tormented the devs and easily defeated them, Ayappa had no problems grabbing her by the horns and slamming her down into the floor. That's all it took to fulfill the prophecy. On a side note, Vishnu as Mohini as well as Shiva play a very crucial part in a huge experiment, the churning of the ocean. More on that in a future episode. That's all for this week. If you have comments or suggestions, please leave a comment or a review on the site sfipodcast.com or tweet at sfipodcast. You can also find me on Instagram and Facebook. Be sure to subscribe to the show to get notified automatically of new episodes. Thanks to all you listeners, again, for your continued support and your feedback. The music is from purpleplanet.com. That's purple-planet.com. Next week, we'll cover a couple of stories from the Panchatantra. One is about a little baby boy and his very unlikely animal sibling. The other introduces air travel to a tortoise. The cost of the entry ticket? He just has to keep his mouth closed. The character next week is a very colourful creature. It's a rainbow fish. I also like to think of it as the Elsa fish, for reasons that will be clear next week. I'll see you then.